Hi everybody, she's Angie. And she's Rhonda. And we are Adventures, Adventures in Nomadas. Thank you so much for joining us today for part two of our exterior trailer tour. Now try and say that fast five times. Of the Escape 21. <laughs> All right, stay tuned. Hi everybody, thanks again for joining us for part two of our walk around to talk about all the details that you get normally when you order an Escape 21 and the options we chose or things that we opted out of. And we're gonna start today with the top of the RV. The things that come standard are the Max Fan, which we absolutely love. And then the air conditioner we talked about in the interior tour, but that's what it looks like on top. Now what's not standard is the solar panels. We haven't used them yet, but we have 270 watt solar panels up here. What we did give up was a jack TV antenna to get that second one. Uh, there's the other one on the aft there. Hopefully you can see our very, very pretty room reviews here. But uh, we don't really watch TV, so having more solar was more important to us than actually having TV. On so many travel trailers, a ladder comes standard, usually on the back end of it, but this does not. So we ended up buying this really cool telescoping ladder and getting some pool noodles, which we refer to as poodles from here on out. And we just cut these in half and put them on the edge. So this is actually nice because, you know, you're really not supposed to be up on the roof here, depending on how much weight. But uh, this is great because when we're up here, we can reach just about every bar up here. So this is our poodle and our ladder and back to Rhonda. Okay, the next thing we want to cover is the front end of the RV, and I'm going to start with these E2 by Fastway weight distribution and stabilizer hitch. So this bar essentially goes into the back end of the truck and then fits into here. And this comes down with it. So if you think about this being out, and then this slides in there and then this comes back down and basically holds it in tight. I found this to be a lot easier than the old school way that we used to have, which was a big old chain that you had to pop on. So we hardly ever have to use a bar on this, but you can use a bar. The next thing that we chose to do is not standard, is add a light up here. So this light comes on and off on the outside. And we thought we would use it if it's dark and we need to get into the bin or check propane or something like that. It's easier just to have a light that's handy. The next thing is the storage box. The storage box is an option you can choose to have. I've seen some people uh, have some special boxes made, but if you are getting an escape RV, I really recommend that you have some sort of box up here for your external storage. And by that, I mean the things that you use outside, like your power cords, hoses, uh, that kind of thing, and chocks, etc. The next thing for us is we chose to get the power jack. Now, if you're only doing weekends, you may not need this, but because we're moving all the time, we felt like we needed to go with the power jack, whereas before we've always used just the hand crank. If for some reason this fails, there's a little hole here, and you use a stabilizer uh, bar, pop it in there and basically do it by hand. So I think that covers everything up here. Let's move around to the side. So on the right side of the trailer, we have our awning. There's a wide range of discussion and debate on the awning, whether to go with power awning or the, the manual awning. We had our reasons for going with the manual awning and they are because we live in the Pacific Northwest and we're gonna do a lot of our traveling in this area, there's obviously a lot of rain. We've had manual awnings in the past and doesn't really, it's not really that big of a deal for us to put it in and out, uh, but the, the pros and cons of each are with the manual awning, uh, you can actually tilt it to one side, so if you do have a you know, significant amount of rain, it will just keep sliding off, keep pouring off, which is nice. Uh, with the power awning, you can't really tilt it to one side, so if you have a lot of rain, rainfall it could pull up in the middle and then it could damage it uh, the other thing with the power awning is that it will it will like go in automatically if you have too much wind which is a really great feature uh, however 
Again, because we live in the Pacific Northwest and we do a lot of traveling within the forests and the woods, we do get a significant amount of pine needles and twigs that come on, on top of it. So for it to, to just sort of uh, power a retract in a windstorm uh, may be such that for us, we would have debris that would get sucked in as well, which could also damage it. So we've gone with the manual awning for those reasons, but I think it really depends on how, how and when, and you know, you tend I wanted to use that and that's why we went with that. Uh, down here we've got the standard stabilizer jacks but we did ask, uh, add on the sand pads which is the larger pad down there. Uh, it does come standard with the step. What it doesn't come standard with, this was another option, is the propane quick disconnect, quick connect, whatever you want to call it, and that uh, hooks up to your propane tanks up front. So it's really great if you have a uh, barbecue grill, which we do a lot of, and we can just plug that right into there. So that we really like. Uh, moving on uh, to the wheels. Talk about wheels. They come standard with the, just the regular white wheels. We thought they were a little bit ugly. So we upgraded to the aluminum wheels and they look pretty darn slick. Uh, we also went with some awning lights up here, which is, you can't really see right now, but those look really cool. And we also went with the amber lens in here. Of our outside vent here. So if you do have the vent above your stove, it'll vent to the outside. It does have some clips there. I'm too short to get. That's why I have Rhonda around because she's 5'8 and I'm only 5'2. And the uh, standard out here is the regular plug with the GFCI. And we also added back here uh, 12 volt and USB. So if we're out here working with computers, we can plug right in with our cell phones and stuff. And we also went with the, the ZAMP. So even though we've got the 270 watt solar panels above, we you know elected to have the ZAMP plug in. So if we wanted a solar suitcase, we can have that. Uh, another thing, because we live amongst a lot of trees, we like to travel within a lot of trees, it's nice to have at least one solar panel. We'll see how it goes with our two that we already have installed, but it may be nice at some point to have a solar suitcase that we can move around from one spot to the next, basically chasing the sun. So for the back of the RV, we have a wireless backup camera. Now this isn't just for backing up, you can have it on while you're driving down the road, and that for us would be a plus if we could remember to hook it up. So right now we've got it up there, we've only moved the RV a couple times, but we see using it when we're driving down the road and be able to see behind us much better. The other thing some people do is they'll put another light back here, we did not do that, and it does come with a standard level, so this will give you the side to side. The other thing we have on the back here is a hitch receiver that allows you to put up to 150 pounds here. One caution, just be aware of your weight distribution. So you don't want to put a lot of weight on the back here and have this heavier than the, your front axle. So that, because that'll give you more sway. With that, I think I'll turn it back over to Angie. Hey, starting on the left side, on the very back, we have the uh, power hose. So it comes standard as a power hose that basically stuffs back in and doesn't disconnect. We went with the power cord that disconnects. That way we could just take this off and, and uh, uh, store it up in the front box. One of the reasons that if you have this, you know, basically you have a big hole here if you stuff this back in and that can allow bugs to come in. So we decided to, to do that. One of the things I love about this RV, it comes with a, a dedicated sewer uh, compartment right here. Some, most RVs actually have it in the bumper, but this is really nice for uh, good quick access and it's dedicated for that. One of the options you can get is a, another compartment door here. We elected not to because we can access this just fine from inside underneath the bench. Uh, it's, an, you know, less holes. It's a, you know, uh, less of a way for somebody else to try and break in as well and try and get something out of this particular spot because, you know, these compartment doors are, are not the sturdiest as far as getting into. We've got the water uh, city and the tank right here. So pretty standard uh, fridge vent and furnace vent right here if i can open it all right well i can't open it but <laughs> anyway 
the cables in here. So we probably won't ever use this for part cable because we don't have a TV. However, we do have a WeBoost. So we have the WeBoost antenna uh, basically on a pole that we can attach and we can just plug that into here and then use the inside uh, antenna basically for uh, the boost for our cell service if we need to. So we'll just plug right into there. <laughs> We went with the red striping. There's uh, probably five or six or more different variations just on the red. We tried to pick something that would loosely match our truck, but we've seen some pretty cool colors, black, gray, green, blue. You could pretty much customize whatever striping you want on here. Uh, we do have this other light right here too. We are not the type that likes to try and get into any place at all after dark, but if you did get into some place after dark, uh, we would be able to have a light to hook up the power and the water, which is pretty great. Uh, the hot water heater right here. And uh, we elected to go with the two-way. So this will operate on electric or propane. Um, that's a, an upgrade I highly, highly recommend is having the two-way. We do like to boondock and we'll be boondocking quite a bit. So having this on uh, propane, but also being able to use the electric version when we are hooked up. This right here is the outside shower and uh, has a, a quick disc nose that we quick disconnect hose that we also store in the front box. This is a pretty cool option uh, and you can have them kind of wherever you want. Uh, a lot of people like to have it on the other side in case you want to have an outdoor kitchen under the awning. Uh, this side is nice if you're trying to wash pets or just wash you know stuff off your your feet and I think a couple people can you know have decided to have a couple of them. We just went with one. I might regret it later on having one on the right hand side but for now this is what we've gone with. And the one outside uh, access that we have is uh, this access is under the bed. So we just, we don't really have anything important down in here other than toilet paper and paper towels because at least as far as the access right here. That way, you know, if someone did want to pop that off and try and break in, well, if they need toilet paper and paper towels that bad, I guess they can have them. The rest of the stuff is, you know, basically closed. So if, we really don't keep anything important uh, down here. Well, why am I laying on the ground? Well, because we decided to also go with the insulated underneath. This is a, a great option that'll keep the floor a lot warmer, but uh, we also have the, the tank heater. So the fresh and the gray, we have like a, a pad with two switches on the inside that will heat up the tanks when we need to. So this underbelly, bell, underbelly insulation basically because covers everything underneath the belly and I, hopefully that will keep us a little warmer in cold temperatures we may not do super cold you know camping and this is not considered a four season trailer however with those with the extra insulation both in the the whole rv and underneath we hope this will be at least a three and a half and you know if we were in some place really cold we can do some skirting and you know do the uh, electric uh, water hose kind of thing that we probably will be just fine if we do go into colder temperatures uh, also standard over there is the, in case you want to know where those are at, is the gray and the black tanks as far as the drains. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this walk around and the options that we chose. And I hope you didn't mind the dirt that you may have seen on the RV because it's been dumping rain and the RV's been <laughs> sitting here for a few weeks. Yes, it has. But well, thanks again for joining us. One of the reasons we love Escape so much is because there was a lot of options that we can choose. So let us know if you have any questions about anything we've done so far. And stay with us because next week we're going to cover the mods that we've done so far for full-time living to make it more comfortable for us. And if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Then you'll get notifications when we have a new video coming out. Happy adventures and see you next week. Bye. So on the right try... <laughs> 150 pound... Let me do that over again because I just went blank on what the f*** you call that. <laughs>